Hey guys, Abby here, and in today's video I'm going to be explaining cryo efficiency in depth. What it is, what it does, and my goal is to answer the question, can you have too much cryo efficiency? As a disclaimer, please keep in mind that Borderlands math is very difficult to test, especially across four different Vault Hunters, many skills, and Guardian rank, so your experience may be different. Also, I want you guys to let me know in the comments down below what is the highest cryo efficiency you've seen on a weapon. Cryo is an element in Borderlands 3 that you can get on your weapons and grenades. Looking at the description in game, it says, cryo damage slows enemies and eventually freezes them based on your cryo efficiency. Cryo efficiency is the percentage of damage dealt that is applied as cryo. At 100% efficiency, enemies freeze at 20% health. Frozen enemies are unable to move and take three times melee damage. When you deal cryo damage to enemies, you'll see a white glow around them, and then they start to slow their attacks and eventually they freeze. This effect will also wear off after the enemy stops receiving cryo damage, so it's important to target enemies that you want frozen. But even while not frozen, cryo still provides nice crowd control because enemies aren't attacking or firing as frequently. However, the ultimate goal with cryo is to freeze as many enemies as possible, and we do this by increasing our cryo efficiency, so let's talk about that. The higher your cryo efficiency, the less cryo damage you need to inflict on the enemy to freeze them. The cryo efficiency of your weapon can be found on the item card shown here. For the most part, with some exceptions, each weapon type has a different cryo efficiency. So pistols have 100%, assault rifles have 110%, SMGs have 126%, shotguns have 158%, Snipers have 84%. However, I believe there are only a few cryo snipers in the game right now, and heavy weapons have 68%. However, some weapons, namely Malawan and Alien Barrel weapons, will provide higher cryo efficiency based on their weapon parts. So you'll notice in your weapon parts, you may have a barrel or something like that that says elemental damage. That's gonna add cryo efficiency to your weapon. You'll see here my Kibsworth has 235% cryo efficiency and we'll be using this SMG for a lot of the footage you see in the background here and for my testing. Of course, I don't have all the weapons to compare for you in this video, so definitely pay attention to your own item card to find your cryo efficiency. Grenades also have their own cryo efficiency and some can be extremely high or have elemental perks and lingering effects. These are harder to factor into our overall cryo efficiency, so I just think of grenades as an extra source of cryo damage, similar to my cryo racks on flak. Look out for grenades that will hit multiple targets like the recurring hex or ones with the perk chiller or elemental are really great ones to pick up. You can even find some really top-notch purple grenades from the vending machines even that are anointed and have really great perks for elemental builds. All right, now that we've set the foundation, let's figure out how much cryo efficiency you need to freeze an enemy. From the in-game description, we know that 100% cryo efficiency, the enemy will freeze at 20% health. This seems like a lot of damage required to freeze, and it is a lot at the base level, and you'll find that in most cases, squishy enemies will die before that threshold anyway because they're taking damages from other sources or from your anointments. However, in Mayhem 4, we face a lot tankier enemies with multiple health shield and armor bars, and slowing their attacks and freezing them is really great for survivability, but it's definitely important to increase your cryo efficiency to freeze these threats quickly. Because like I said before, waiting till they're at 20% health is a long time. Any increase to our cryo efficiency or cryo damage from our equipped gear will lower the time it takes and the amount required to freeze an enemy. So for example, using the Kibsworth SMG, which I showed you guys before, is 235% cryo efficiency, the enemy is now going to be freezing at 47% health, so we're going to need to do 53%. So at a base level, with no additional cryo damage or efficiency, just using the Kibsworth SMG, we only have to do 53% damage to the enemy's health before they freeze. If we then go ahead and add in a 27% cryo efficiency boost from an artifact, then we're able to freeze them at 52% health. So now we're down to 48% health damage that we actually have to do before they freeze. Also, if you find an ion laser with the right parts, the ion laser comes from the uh, newest Moxie's Jackpot DLC. 
it'll actually be at 305% cryo efficiency. That's the one I have here. It's the highest cryo efficiency gun I've seen. I feel like I say that every video, I have a new gun that has a higher cryo efficiency. But when you pair this with cryo efficiency on your artifact for 27%, you're going to be freezing enemies at 66% health. So that's only 34% damage that you have to do to them, which is not a lot at all. So the ion laser is something that you guys could use with a cryo build as well. Additional cryo damage will also help freeze the enemy quicker. You're not going to freeze them at a uh, different percentage of health, but it will allow you to do more damage quicker and so they freeze quicker. In this case I'm using a plus 16% cryo damage on my artifact and an anointed grenade that gives 50% bonus cryo damage with weapons for 10 seconds. These elemental anointments on your shield and grenade are super useful and really really helpful. It's pretty much uh, in my opinion, it's pretty much the meta for Mayhem 4. It adds so much damage, especially for Rack, Attack, Flak. We can also add weapon damage from our class mods and our skills and damage anointments to our weapons too. Specifically for Flak, Cryo Racks also add damage to maintain the Cryo status effect and freeze the enemy. Other Vault Hunters have skills and elemental damage bonuses that can help as well, like Zane's uh, Brain Freeze. The question is, how much cryo efficiency is enough and can you have too much? Well, stacking the efficiency for my weapon and artifact perk, I can consistently freeze enemies around 75% health. To run a build focused on cryo crowd control, I think it's necessary to have a high cryo efficiency weapon and a plus 27% cryo efficiency um, perk on your artifact. It's also important to keep in mind in true Vault Hunter mode against health bars you'll be doing the full damage, against shields you'll be doing uh, minus 50% damage, and against armor you'll be doing plus 50% damage. So this only affects how quickly you can do enough cryo damage to freeze a target as the total damage needed to freeze is still the same. So we're still having to freeze that percent of health dependent on our cryo efficiency. However, because we're going to be doing 50% less damage to shields and 50% more to armor, then that'll affect the speed at which we get to that percentage of health. But we also know that health bar only enemies are pretty rare in Mayhem 4, so you're going to want to stack as much cryo efficiency and damage as you can to help you get through those shields. I would also recommend always having a brainstormer or some sort of shock weapon on you at all times to help with the shields. That's the only thing you really have to worry about. You could always have a shock grenade as well. And then for cryo damage, weapons like the Redistributor SMG are really super awesome. Even though they have lower cryo efficiency than the Kibsworth and the Ion Laser and the Mali One Guns and Alien Barrel weapons, I think you'll find that the Redistributor is really amazing at taking down multiple enemies. It can freeze a ton of enemies at once so if you're mobbing this gun is super great if you're trying to focus down single targets it might be worth using kibsworth ion laser something like that but for mobs the redistributor smg is really my favorite gun is my go-to is my everyday all day uh, redistributor smg with an action skill and weapon damage or a rack anointment those are my go-to's i've even been able to freeze multiple enemies even though i'm not shooting at them because the redistributor every seven shots it chains to the nearest enemy and that shot is actually amped so it can freeze enemies that you're not even shooting at it can kill enemies you're not even shooting at because of the chain and it's absolutely amazing and i would highly recommend trying to pick one of those smgs up if you haven't already you can get it in the molly one takedown but if you plan to freeze all the enemies and you are going for a cryo based build and you've stacked as much cryo efficiency and damage as possible on your artifact your anointments etc then i have to also recommend the icebreaker artifact to you guys if you haven't heard of this artifact basically it helps you keep the enemies frozen and it allows you to do more damage while they're frozen you get a 35 percent damage buff against frozen enemies and also 50 percent cryo efficiency to frozen which is just going to allow you to keep them frozen so that you'll do more damage because they're still frozen and this is what i use for cryo flak and it gives me a huge boost in damage it's really nice not only are the enemies frozen because uh, we've got higher efficiency we've got more damage to them 
we're just melting them down. Like we're just shattering them completely. It's amazing. It can also be a good artifact to run even if you're not specced into cryo, but if you have cryo damage as an elemental anointment, or maybe you have one one weapon that you're using that has cryo or your grenades have cryo, it can just be good just to get that extra damage boost when they do get frozen. To recap, cryo efficiency at the base level leaves much to be desired as it takes damaging 80% of an enemy's health bar to freeze them. However, with the use of character skills, artifacts, weapons, and anointments, we can improve the crowd efficiency to a level that's useful for crowd control in Mayhem 4. Weapons that chain between enemies like the Redistributor SMG and the Brainstormer Shotgun are great for applying cryo damage to mobs. To apply cryo damage with the Brainstormer, you also need the cryo elemental anointment. Grenades can also help continuously apply cryo damage to avoid defrosting the enemy. A frozen enemy presents less of a threat to you, your teammates, and your pet if you're playing flak, so keep an eye out for that cryo gear. If you got this far into the video, thank you so much for listening, and I hope this helped explain cryo efficiency in Borderlands 3. I also stream live on twitch.tv slash abbyhour, Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday at 8 p.m. Eastern Time. Here's a clip from the last stream. Hey guys, welcome to uh, my new YouTube video. I'm gonna show you how to get infinite money from this guy right here. All you gotta do. <laughs> and also, for more Borderlands 3 content, make sure to subscribe here, hit the bell icon for notifications, and I will see you in the next video. Bye-bye.